special meeting uh, organizing the board, and it's my uh, duty, responsibility, and honor to convene the meeting for the Leland and Gray School Board of Directors. And it's now uh, 108. So, uh, and we have a quorum. So, uh, the first order of business is to we elect uh, officer, and uh, particularly the first is the chair. So, we're uh, nominations are open for the chair for the Leland and Gray School Board. Have a nomination. You better hurry up because I'm going to nominate you. Emily Long? Uh, Emily Long. Uh, Joe, you're nominating yes. Emily Long. I Quickly. second. Uh, Emily, you're accepting <laughs> the nomination? I, I, I sense a little hesitation, so please, somebody. No. Oh, no. No, no hesitation. No hesitation. Because no. 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 sure? okay. we were just being say. very polite. All right. <laughs> other, uh, other nominations? Hearing none, see none. Uh, we vote all those in favor of Emily Long as the uh, chair of the board for the ensuing year. Say aye. Aye. And opposed? And abstentions? So we got a unanimous support and vote, and that meeting is yours. Take it away. Thank you. So I'm going to just, if you don't mind, I'm just going to back up You're slightly on the agenda because uh, we actually did I put some checks on it already, but yeah, I wanted to do that. Good. Which, if you'll see your agenda, welcome. Hi. Welcome back. And we have a new board member, which we're thrilled about. And so I think, to be fair, we should go around and introduce ourselves before even you introduce yourself. So we'll start over here. First Actually, Parliament, Jamaica. Uh, yeah, tell us. I'm Bowman Nadavi from New Fane. I'm Joe Winrick from Taxi. Emily Long, I'm also from New Fane. Okay. You're into our friend, the principal. I'm Frank Rucker, the financial officer. Yeah. <laughs> Patty Gibson, <laughs> Jamaica. Dion Newton Windham. And Lyndall Bowl from Brookline. Nice to see you again. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for okay. stepping up. And over in the corner is, of course, our most important, as I always say, Tara Meinhardt. She takes our minutes for us. And you know Stephen. Yes. yes. Okay, great. Welcome. Welcome to everybody back again. Go ahead. Paul and uh, right. that hasn't changed. That has not changed. In fact, I don't think either of the other two were up. Okay. Um, uh, there, there are two more board members that are not here. In fact, Paul had told us, thank you, Paul had told us that he was going to miss the, the next two meetings, so I knew Paul wasn't going to be here tonight. Jeremy um, from Newfane as well may come. He wasn't up this year. Paul wasn't up, right? No, no, no. no, no. Nobody so, in the book. Right. So um, we have those two. We do still, for, for, you know, for camera's sake, if nothing else, we still have an opening in Newfane. No one put their name in for Jay Urado's position, oh. um, and we have to have petitions ahead of time. So the New Fane board knows they've been trying. The New Fane board is charged, as all your boards are, um, the school district board is charged with appointing someone. They actually have openings on their own board. Frank, how many do they have? Do they have one or two still on their board? Uh, one, I think. I think it is one. I think they had enough to fill all but one. So they actually have <coughs> their own appointment to make, the one to hear. So if anyone knows anyone in Newfane who's interested in serving on school board, you don't have to be from Newfane. You just have to know someone from Newfane to convince them, because <laughs> we really do need another person here. And you know, it makes it easier for us when it's an 11-person board if we've got a full membership. And now that we have Brookline, we've been without Brookline for quite some time. So I realized that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so this is great. So, but, but we're still back down to 10 again instead of 11. So that makes it a little harder on quorums and stuff. We still need six for quorum. So, anyway, so we'll, we'll move on. Um, election of vice chair, currently it is Joe. Joe, you want to still do it? Sure. We need nomination. Nomination. Okay. Second. Vice chair. Okay. Joe's been nominated. Um, are you, in, are you willing? Sure. Okay. So second. Are there, and it's been second, actually you don't need second nominations. Oh. But um, are there any other nominations for vice chair? If not, all those in favor of Joe Winrick for Vice Chair of Lily Gray Board, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Abstentions? As usual, we're unanimous. Thank you. Um, election of clerk, I believe, right now, it's you, right? Mm -hmm. Bruce is clerk currently. Are you still interested in doing it, or is anyone else interested in doing it? Actually, that's, that's I guess the question is did Joe get bothered too much when personnel issues came up for executive? Well, we're not so negotiating a contract for three more years, I think you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, two more years, I think. Well, two more years. 
But yeah, you're sick this year. Yeah, you're sick. I don't mind if Joe doesn't okay. mind. I'll nominate you, Bruce. Okay, Bruce Parliament has been nominated for clerk. And if he's willing to take it, that's great. Are there any other nominations for clerk? All right, if not, all those in favor of Bruce Parliament to make it for clerk, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Authorized signatures. I think what we have done, oh, and he's the one I forgot to mention. Sorry about that, Mike. I didn't even mention your name. Mike from Townsend. You can introduce yourself. I'm Mike Dolan. Ben Dolan. She's Brooklyn. Shockingly enough. <laughs> that was just saying we're short a person from New Thing now. So we still are a 10 person board out of 11, but hopefully we'll get that fixed. So authorized signatures, I think what we've done in the past, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we've had the, the officers. Am I right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Okay, so does anybody have any feedback on that? Are you ha happy with having the officers as authorized signatures? And if you are, somebody should make them up. I move to have the officers, Bjorn, whatever. Authorized signatures? Yes. Okay. All right, it's been moved. Um, this isn't a nomination. Well, this is still a nomination. You don't need seconds on this, do you? No, no you don't you're need you're seconds. I mean, even on author signatures. Yeah, okay. Um, so, okay, it's been it's been um, motion to put the officers for authorized signatures. If there's no other motion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? And abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Um, paper of record, that's still the Bradbury formula, am I right? If you, uh, yeah, that's what, uh, you just authorize that by the year, but that's what we recommend. Yeah, but that is, okay, yeah. that is that's so what I'm moved. asking. Okay, it's been moved Second. to have the, it's been moved and seconded to have the Bradbury reformer be the paper of record for Leland and Gray Union High School Board. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any abstentions? No's? Can we all? Your signatures are the officers. Right? Uh, officers. Okay, meeting, time and date. So you're going to have a whole set if we do what other boards have done. It sounds like other boards have changed their well, meeting dates on it's you. it's exciting life. Uh, <laughs> he just ran from Dover. Something works. Really something works. So. Uh, Joe's made a motion, I think, didn't you? To do second well, Tuesday. Well, let's discuss it afterwards. That'll still okay. work. I'll move second Tuesday okay. of the month it's at been 7 o'clock. Moved. Is there a second for that? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded for the second Tuesday, which is what we are right now. Um, you okay with that? Yeah, I, everything fits. I uh, will make it work. Thanks. If it changed, I'd never remember. <laughs> well, that would not be good. So, all right. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Second Tuesday of the month yeah, just, at seven. Yeah, just so you know what's going on. The boards at reorganization meetings can move their times, and Dover decided to move to the second Tuesday of the month, five thirty. Now it's actually just as well, because they were also meeting on Monday before at 6 o'clock, which Marlboro met on the first Monday. <laughs> anyway. Do, do they have a second meeting still a month? Uh, they do. They're the only board left with the second meeting a month. And is that also on the second Tuesday? No, it's on the fourth Tuesday. I mean the fourth Tuesday. Yeah. That's what I meant. I'm so it's Tuesday. So, they're, me, so they're, they've yeah. gone all the way over to Tuesdays. Yeah. Okay. Because on occasion, <coughs> we do have a fourth Tuesday. Yeah. Like, um, we actually... I think do the fourth Tuesday for our budget information mm -hmm. before we actually vote on the budget. So we'll have to keep it. It will oblige them to organize our meetings so that I can just be there and leave on time again. It did sound like it had to do with a, a board member who. Yeah. Yeah. I did make yeah. a comment to them about it. Shift, uh, yeah. Who one couldn't make it that way. So. Okay. So, truant officer, we still have the. Windham County Sheriff, I okay. recommend. It is the Windham County Sheriff this year, and Stephen's recommending it. Motion. Move. Okay, it's been moved by Joe Second. and seconded by Mike to have the Wyndham County Sheriff's Department be the truant officer for Leland and Gray. Any discussion? All those in favor? Oh, did you I'll just add oh. that, just so you know, there, I signed a contract, Wyndham County Sheriff, for the WCSU, oh. and then they do a, then they're able to bill us on the Okay. okay. Any if, other they, if we picked somebody else, would they not be able to bill us? Well, if we called them to do something, they'd still bill us. But I'm talking about some other towns, their truant officer is really the police, you know, local constable. I mean, that's a, like, you don't really have that option here. So, you know, it's not a really very controversial motion. I'm just explaining how this works. In the other case, the town constable probably would provide the service free to the, to the school. 
I believe in Georgia. Was, um, the truant officer probably not all that often, I would assume, no. or even around the SU. Is that uh, no, around the SU very rarely, and here is a major place where it might come in yeah. to use. But not frequently. Not this year. Not this year. Okay, well, that's good. All right, so any other discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion to have the Wyndham County Sheriff's Department be our truant officer, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Wyndham Central Policy Committee representatives. Um, I think this past year it was Bruce. Am I right, Bruce? Was it you? Or Joe. <laughs> or you? <laughs> Someone needs to tell me. Do you, do you see it in the minutes? I, I thought it was you. Um, I don't think well, we, there should we didn't be, meet, we didn't so meet so and I don't know what the schedule is, Stephen. I do have a schedule for any meetings. You probably do not. No, I don't have any meetings um, scheduled for that. We are. Ooh. It was Joe. It was Joe. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Unless we changed it at some point, which is possible. I don't think so. I think, that's okay. I think we. I think Bruce had been the year before, maybe or something. That's what I got confused about. So I don't know who Susan, anybody can do it. Right? I think Susan, Susan was, was too. Like, oh, she sure. had been sure. Yep. And then came Joe, and we got the job done. This is a, a committee that um, meets very rarely. Although you know, maybe in the change. future it might change because it would be great if it did. Um, but we actually, it, it, that probably won't happen until after bylaws committee right. uh, presents their recommendation to the Wyndham Central Board and the Wyndham Central Board acts on it, which will be in the end of this month that we hope, um, which may make that committee a little more active. So I don't know who <laughs> interested, if you're interested in staying on it. I'll continue if no one else wants it. If someone else wants it, speak up, please. Okay, if no one mind. Here's what I will say is if it becomes more active and he feels like he can't do it, you can always resign from the position and we'll point someone out. Okay. Uh, if, if somebody else felt strongly about it, I would certainly let them have it. No, I have no time. They're not, they're not, they're not leaping on it. I'm just trying to grab somebody. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. All right. So, Mike, are you going to nominate him? I nominate Joe. Okay. Joe's been nominated. There's no other nominations. All those in favor of the motion to have Joe as our Wyndham Central Policy Committee representative, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Motion passes. And the Wyndham Central Supervisory Union Board representatives, in the past we've done the officers. It's not necessary, but in the past we have. Um, it's up to the, all of you. Is this likely to change with the bylaw changes? Uh, now the question regarding representatives, voters, right. voting representatives. At this point in time, we're we are required to have three for each school district, yeah. so that won't change. Three representatives um, until if at some point in the future we decided to um, ask for a waiver from the state board of education, then it could change. But at this point in time, state statute requires each school district to have three representatives as long as they're an operating school, have an operating school. On the right, and just, union just to be clear, I think what Bruce is inquiring about is if a Wyndham Central Education District, if a K through 12 district were formed by the four or five towns voting, it would still require a waiver. It would them. require a waiver from the State Board of Education to re-assign uh, the voting uh, proportion of, of power, relative power, among the towns within the SU. But uh, that, you know, the the fact is that this board, even if that were formed, this board would continue through the fiscal year. So I don't expect that that, that would change until, uh, you know, the WCSU board, the, the new board, the WCED board, the red board, would take over uh, operation of the schools, which is not likely to be for a year at least, right? I'm just trying to allay your concerns about having to change it is a, at, at this point in time, based on past experience, as you know, Bruce, because you've been the person, it is a fairly substantial commitment for a board member to do it um, because we really need to have people on this board um, who are willing to attend those meetings. Now, I know the two of you have been really good about it, and if you're still willing to do it, great. If somebody else wants to step in, that's fine, too. <coughs> Not to say that everybody isn't welcome and should attend but the three people who are appointed are the voting reps and if that changes as you know we've had to reappoint had people resign and then reappoint and then reappoint them again and we've gone through that several times with each of you mm -hmm. so there are four to five wcsu full board meetings a year presently 
the bylaws may try to change that, but that's what the present commitment is on Wednesdays. Okay. So we have a motion. To make a motion to well, I'll make a motion that we assign the officers to be our voting representatives to WTHO. Great. All right. That one doesn't need a second either. That's pointless. So, um, okay, if there's no other nominations, all those in favor of the officers being the Wyndham Central Supervisor Union Board representatives, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Abstentions? Okay, motion passes. All right, the uh, thing I didn't, uh, additions or corrections to the agenda is actually after this, but I did think we should at uh, least get someone thinking about this one piece, right, about um, the Regional Career Center. Yes. Um, this, that's the only other appointment that I know of that we make each year, and Jay Urado has been great about being on it and attending those meetings, but now that he is no longer on our board, we have an opening on the Wyndham Regional Career Center Advisory Board is what it is. Can we still um, make Joe do it? <laughs> this is, Stephen, you'll have to help me out because I don't go to these meetings, but it's monthly during the school year for the most part, but not every month. Yeah, right. Um, it's, they it's skip pretty regularly, but they skip a couple. They skip now and a then. few months, yeah. and it doesn't meet in the summer. Yeah, right. it meets at noon generally, and it's, now it rolls the lunch, at the and now center. it meets at the career center. It doesn't move around very much. It, it used to switch around to the schools that um, that the career center serves, but now it's, it only meets there. I don't know if during you go at nice some point. Lunch. Do you go to them? I go. Yes, I go quite regularly. So we well, really do need lunch. board representative on this if we can. I don't know if anybody's interested in doing it. Um, if you, I, I know it's it, the the toughest part about it is this time. Um, you know, it's a noon time thing, and they understand we've gone for years without having a representative on this board. Um, but then Jay stepped in because he works in Brattleboro and was able to take off for lunch. Um, if no one's willing to step up, I'll do it. But I. I mean, I'm brand new, so I would yeah, leave that's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I know. Better way to learn. Step in where people. nobody's been for years. I, so. I was actually going to. I was actually going to suggest if you you go. Don't I you? Do, yeah, I can, you can I walk can her through down, the yeah. process. Okay, and I, I don't want to go representing when I'm not a good representative. But. I I think it would be wonderful to have you on. I was almost going to pin you to. Would you be interested? But I didn't dare because I'm but trying I'm to be too polite. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're willing to do it, we'd be happy to. Um, I'll be newly retired. <laughs> <laughs> great. So it's new time new, meetings. Yeah. And it's great lunch. The career oh. center. <laughs> the, well, I mean, seriously, they make a really it wonderful is. lunch. See, the career it's center. Their, it's, you know, it's their culinary. All right. Well, somebody department. will. Yes. Clue me we'll in. Get you and get you, yeah. He can get you the list. Okay. We need a nomination. Nobody knows my name. It's Lyndall Bowl. I think everybody. <laughs> I nominate Lyndall Bowl. Okay. <laughs> so I'm nominated. I bet you there's no other nominations, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All those in favor of Lyndall doing this for us, We're going on the Wyndham. Regional Career Center Advisory Board. Oh Please say aye. Okay. Aye. aye. And opposed? Abstentions? Okay, thank you so much. Right. I'm so thrilled because I was quite worried about this because we've had good representation on there, and I hate to drop that. Stephen will, I hope, be more than happy to fill you yeah, in. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm trying to find the date, the next date, just so you know okay. what to put on your luncheon. Thank you. Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think there is one. This one. Jump right in the deep end yeah. of the pool. I think it's... Uh, Okay. Additions or corrections to the agenda while we're doing that. Uh, do, are we okay on this? I didn't miss anything on that from the last year's. Did I think that's all the stuff? Let's see. Reorg. Does anybody remember anything else for reorganization? Okay. Moving ahead. Additions or corrections. Jump in if I've forgotten something. Any additions or corrections? If not, members of the public. No members of the public correspondence. I didn't check the box. There is nothing. Nothing, there. There. Okay, nothing in the box. Um, oh no, I, I just remembered there was a priest correspondence, but that's for when you're central, not for here. Okay. Um, anybody else have any correspondence? If not, um, administrative reports. We're on to new Durin. and this is um, sort of a follow-up because we didn't get a quorum at the last meeting. So we have your report and, and documents from our last meeting, correct? Right. I can write more for you. Right. No, Maybe that was, last, last that was probably was a good thing, <laughs> because we do that a lot. Okay. 
Uh, but the first thing I wanted to share before I go into the reports is that uh, my responsibility is to inform the board when there is a trip um, beyond uh, the five neighboring states, and uh, this is one abroad to Italy. And on April 11th, there is an art trip, and uh, they're going to um, Milan, Venice, Florence, uh, Rome, uh, including the Vatican, which I guess is in digital wow. Rome. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, and Sorrento region on ways. Oh, and they will see Pompeii. Do you and need a board representative on this? <laughs> I, I think we might be fighting over that one. So it's it's a brief trip. They're, they they leave on April 11th and they return already on April 18th. So it fits well with our April break. And this trip had been about two years in the making. So and wow. so I just want to let you know any questions about that. Where do I sign up? <laughs> That's really exciting. Thank and it's you. Stephanie Nizio who has organized and is guiding the trip. Okay. <coughs> How many students awesome. does she have signed up for? Um, I didn't bring the exact number, but I think it's about a dozen. And do you have a sense how much it's costing students? I don't. I don't have that information with me. Uh, they have been doing fundraising for the, for oh, I know. the year, so I, I couldn't tell you um, off the top of my head. So it would be helpful for me to share, but I'm sorry. <coughs> so you did somebody good eat all those cookies. Yeah. Boy, that's great. Yeah, I'm glad to hear about. So, uh, what I had submitted um, do, do five, six this? weeks ago. I'm yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but um, it reminds me there was a Costa Rica trip. Yes. And so that went well, and kids came back. Yes. Very excited. Yes. Good. Good. Yes. We've all got the email about that. Costa Rica. And uh, Bruce Whitman, who led the trip, there were six students on that one, uh, presented to the faculty at a oh, recent great. meeting, so they got to enjoy and maybe be a little jealous of uh, the experience that they had, which um, what, included a lot of science, but also yeah. a lot of fun. Great. That's good Not to that hear. science can't be fun. I think it was both. Good. good thank you. Yeah, and they're all back safe and sound, sound without incident. And it was just one teacher chaperoning the trip. This, 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 um, the Italy trip because of the number of the students. It's the teacher and another chaperone. Okay. He's not a teacher. Okay. So uh, I had sent um, basically three different pieces of information last time, and I mm -hmm. don't need to go um, till late at night about all of them, though we could. But I just wanted to make sure that you received the second uh, email attachment of the NECAP scores, because the first one I sent represented the testing year, which is different from our teaching year scores. Right. And, and this one was attached to the I agenda sent this the last time. One. Yeah, I sent this recently. Oh, correct. I mean, yeah. so when you opened your agenda for this month's meeting, I think it was in there. Am I right? I think so. I think that's. I mean, I know it was there. I'm, I'm just not. I, I think that's the one you need. Yep. Yeah. Analysis of right, exactly yeah. analysis of 2012 scores eight and eleven. Well, yeah. I mean, they basically are kind of the same title, but well, uh, but the, the main things that I just wanted to share is well, first of all, the discrepancy. We have slightly different students at Leland and Gray right now in grades eight and eleven than we had last year. So that's why there's a discrepancy between the scores. And, in my experience, the testing year and teaching year is the same the same scores. But apparently, when I called uh, Montpelier, they said, "Well, you even have a student who spent last year at Leland and Gray, who's now in Brattleboro and was tested, and that counts for Leland and Gray and not Brattleboro because it, it, again, it's the fall testing for the um, for the teaching year. That's what counts, which meant all our scores went up. So that is a positive reflection for us, but makes our job harder because. I guess some more some weaker students have come in, so it's it's a, a slight difference um, in most cases, but a significant difference in others. So on the very last page, on page four, it just says over, overall uh, Leland Gray student performance on the 2012 NECAP examination. So call, um, NECAP. Uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to point those out because that was 
uh, the, the most remarkable. Um, Leland and Grace, eighth grade girls, have demonstrated exceptional achievement um, in reading. They exceeded the girls' state average. Um, in math, they performed um, the girls' state average by um, 11 percentage points. I mean, that's, that's big. Um, and then in writing, they performed them by 12 percentage points. And it's really like 90 percent proficient among the girls. Um, as a whole, Leland and Grace students have a smaller achievement gap between um, uh, students who are eligible for free and reduced meals uh, than students um, who are not. And there was a so there was one exception in that, but basically, in in you know, there's th there's three uh, sorry, there's two grades and there's three tests. So per grade, so it's six tests. So in five of the areas, our achievement gap was smaller between students eligible for free and reduced meals and not, which is a good thing because we're all trying to narrow this gap by bringing the scores up of the students from disadvantaged backgrounds. And <coughs> Then, for the first time ever, the 11th graders exceeded the target in reading. We actually met our targets in one area, so that's very exciting. Um, and then while the other five targets were not met, in four areas, achievement increased over last year. And there, um, it's not all wonderful news. I mean, if you look at the disaggregated uh, data, um, we still have a, a, a significant concern about um, boys and uh, writing especially that uh, that uh, for if I can just look here so for like 11th grade uh, writing only 18 percent of our males um, met proficiency compared to 50 percent of the females and then in grade 8 there's a discrepancy as well only 38 percent of our boys in grade 8 um, achieved proficiency and then females of course remembered did really well and so this is an area of, of uh, precision-like targeting in terms of the way uh, the teaching of reading and writing has become integrated in every subject area in school. So, and also with the K-12 literacy initiative that is underway, we should see Im improved writers and readers coming up um, uh, in years to come. I don't know if you're aware, but there's a K-12 literacy committee, and our literacy coach, uh, Linda Rood, is on it, and there's a representative from all the elementary schools. It's led by uh, Rosemary Fitzsimons. They meet monthly, and they're very passionate, and they're all literacy coaches at their own schools. So right. very significant initiative. Anything else about the phony cap scores, Patty? Do Boys tend to have a tougher time with testing than girls. Is that well? The we have a big gap with the state. So on page three, it shows gender. Um, you know, our eleventh grade males only eighteen percent pass the test. At the state, it's only thirty-eight percent compared to fifty-five percent of the girls. So it's an it is certainly a national yeah. problem, well, as well as a state problem. Because I mean, there are basic differences between boys and girls. And the gender gap bill has, why, am I right, over the last 20 years or so between boys and girls? Am I right? I mean, well, it used to be that girls were better in elementary school, and then the boys surpassed them in middle yeah. school, and then yeah. outperformed them in high school. Yeah. And that move, that switched in like the late 80s, 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So depending on the subject area. Yeah. It's usually about even in uh, mathematics. Right. Mm. But it, there used to be a big difference in mathematics. Mm. A lot of work to be done. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of focus on it. There's no question. I mean, I'm thrilled to hear what you're saying about what we're doing here with writing and reading and everything else. But it's not just you know a focus here. It's certainly a focus at the state level. Um, and, the, and the initiative that you all got for the BSA is really putting out. That's one of the real concerns. I know the governor has had lots of initiatives that he's been recommending for that as well. So it's scary, really. But. One thing I will mention is that a big emphasis on the new Common Core State Standards yeah. is students learning from text, not the teacher. That they, they gain their informational knowledge by reading. They're learning from reading rather than a teacher 
through usually direct instruction or hands-on activities or you know, presentations. Mm -hmm. uh, and we think we're supposed to do a lot of differentiated instruction to reach the different learning styles, but the Common Core makes clear of, of a preference of one style, which is learning from text. And, and that's what we're working towards doing, not at the expense of differentiation, but a greater emphasis and meaning time allotted for kids to learn from what we call close reading of text. That transition could be difficult for some kids who aren't accustomed, and that's not how Does that they mean learn, class and they time quite or as literate. homework? Class time. Sometimes, or since when with important information, students will uh, be instructed by their teachers to read the text in three different ways. Like they may read parts of it aloud. There's something called chunking text. So if there's, say, a five-page article or a three-page article, sections will be chunked out that they'll read, and there'll be another column next to it where they summarize what they read, or they find the vocabulary that is important, or um, other information that the teacher directs, or a connection to something else that they're working on. So chunking text, another is uh, maybe reading aloud, another one is reading particular passages and analyzing those areas different from the rest to say find the, uh, the author's um, assumptions <coughs> of the argument being made. So a whole different look at reading than just read it. So, so one of the conversations, I was just looking at, at this um, world-class vision for world-class education system that's been put out. Um, and and the, a lot of the talk is about teachers, the evolving role of teachers, and um, how they're, they're really looked at more as coaches. And I think that sort of aligns with what you're talking about. Um, the teacher's role in the future may be more of a coach as opposed to a run of the classroom sort of conversation. And here's one I just want to read what this says. Um, school boards, one of the local action school boards should open discussions among board members, administrators, and teachers regarding the evolving role of the teacher in the world class education system. And in my mind, there isn't any question the teacher's role is evolving and it will continue to. And we need to have that conversation here at this level. We, we really should be talking about it. Because we need to be able to make sure that we're supporting the changes that are needed, I think, if we're ever going to see our kids succeed. We as a board need to support, you know, new initiatives, whatever else is coming. I mean, you're, you're clearly doing some of that. You've got literacy coaches around, but I mean, it, it's something that we need to stay focused on. I think, that evolving world. Well, well, one purpose is that uh, you're representing the public, that the public appreciates that the role of the teacher has changed, so that when they see or they view a classroom or visit a classroom and they see something that really never occurred in their own experience. In school that they recognize it either is consonant and supportive of the consonant with and supportive of the common core standards and this these new these, these new instructional methods and and do not cause alarm you know because right. after all most of us assume that if we go to a classroom and it isn't like what we grew up with uh, there must be something's gone wrong with that class I think particularly about the desks and rows and everybody quiet right. You know, that's not that anymore. There's time for that, but you know, that's that's not how to get everybody there. Does anybody have any other questions about this? I I just have one follow up what you made me think what you were saying made me think about it and Stephen, this is sort of for you too in Common Core, you know, where we are. I, I hear all kinds of horror stories around the country about how um, schools and school systems are feeling like they're they're not where they need to be with the Common Core. Um, and I guess I just wondered what your assessment is here, both of you, on where we are in implementing the Common Core, which is 2014, right? Uh, 20, for math and math. 2015 is when the Oh, is it? Oh, right. We're supposed to be spring. teaching it for sure fall 2014. Fall of 2014. Okay. For the and, spring assessment. And assessed in the spring. Right, assessed in the spring. Yeah. But it starts in the 2014 fall. OK. So um, I shared with the faculty last year that if we never looked at the Common Core and we only integrated the teaching of reading and writing and held our students to high expectations based on our high level of instruction, we will do fine in the Common Core. 
because the first of all, it expects a much higher level of literacy than we currently right. expect. Uh, it is also very narrow in its focus. So for the Vermont um, writing genres, there are six in Common Core. Those are collapsed into two, into three, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is the basis for students to be successful on on those assessments and to you know to really attain those standards. Uh, so I some other principals um, have said to me, wow, you, you got started on this early because you had this literacy initiative already underway. Uh, at many faculty meetings, we, we are involved in um, analyzing the standards. Uh, how they're written is uh, you definitely need to do close reading and um, and like a and annotating while you read to be able to distinguish what you have to do with seventh grade compared to eighth grade. There are much fewer standards, fortunately, and what it does is empowers our faculty to know exactly which reading and writing standards they should be teaching. So I'll just give a quick example. There's the, in both reading and writing, there's standards for English language arts teachers to teach alone. That's theirs to do. And then there's reading and writing standards for social science, arts, and, uh, and I'll say science and, and technical subjects. So it's everybody else, all the special electives, um, you know, music, art, tech ed, PE, they have to teach those. And that is very helpful and, and I would say uh, vindicating for them why we've been working on literacy for the last two years. Uh, and in math, there's some changes that need to be made, and we're working with a consultant, and we have a math committee, K-12, and we had a meeting um, a week ago, two weeks ago, uh, with, two weeks, um, ago. two weeks ago now, yeah, with uh, Professor Mahesh Sharma. It was <coughs> so exciting, I know this is part of the report, but it was so no, exciting because important. we had three representatives from Leland and Gray, two math teachers, and a science, uh, sorry, a special educator, and myself, and a teacher representative from every elementary school in that whole it's SU. In, it's in my superintendent's report. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's why they're so, all right, all right. So I'll stop about that. But, but the, the, the um, mission of that committee is to transition the whole SU to the Common Core in mathematics, because that is a significantly higher level than uh, what's expected of all students now. And our algebra for all for uh, ninth graders who didn't have it in eighth grade is part of that preparation. Well, that makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> okay, but one other thing I just wanted to add this is the notion of teacher as coach. Mm -hmm. um, teacher as coach is a tool in the toolbox of a mm -hmm. professional educator. Mm -hmm. It's they're they're never it, it's it's never. A, just a coach. No, and there's, I think there's a that's lot of instructional been, strategies in right. the box. Uh, absolutely, and I think that's always been really clear. It's okay, just, good. it's just more around the evolving role. I mean, it isn't just that teacher standing up in the front of the room and doing. A, you know, it's much more involved. Kids, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, and clearly, our our students aren't always going to be in a classroom or even in our building. You know, so we we will need to do that. I was just listening to a report about just today about how. The schools, I th who was it that just, it was President Clinton who just um, is proposing some new initiatives because schools in this country are in such terrible physical shape yes. that, that they're very concerned about it. And I was thinking about that and thinking about all the millions or billions of dollars that it's going to cost to bring our schools back half up a, to half shape. A trillion. I mean, we're, we're very fortunate here. We've taken care of our building. but. But we're not we half a trillion. Well, half a trillion so, so I'm more. thinking, you know, as we, as we talk about breaking down the walls of school systems and everything, I think that conversation needs to happen because buildings are very, very expensive to, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that we won't always have school buildings, but, you know, maybe we need to think outside the box a little bit. Yeah, there's a correlation between the environment and the learning. Right. Anyway, I don't mean to take you all off on a tangent, but this is, I, I'm thrilled about the Common Core response. You, your response to the Common Core, it sounds like we are not one of those schools. I, I, seriously, I, and when I was down in Washington this year, it was just terrible. People are nowhere near it. We're, we're not worried. We right. know we are That's doing great. the right thing. So That's we great. Are, I, I'm not, there's no scare tactics. But we've so we been are slowly, or quickly, some would say, marching 
forward. I mean, and we've been doing it for a while, it sounds like, because of all the yeah. literacy initiatives. So that's great. That's, a, that's just what I want to hear. Does anybody have any other questions so far? I know Doreen has more to share. Sorry, didn't mean to get you off. No, um, I sent you the, the NIASC um, report. Um, I, I actually haven't looked at it since I submitted it. This was the one you submitted. <laughs> uh, if I just can answer any questions that you may have. Right. I have to go back to uh, I haven't heard from them since I submitted you know what it. what NIASC is? New England uh, Association of Schools and Sec Secondary Schools and Colleges? Is that mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right? Yeah. Anyway, that's the accreditation of uh, process and review process in New England for uh, high schools and colleges. So universities. this is a report reviewing? Yes, it's a review. report that we were submitting uh, in part of the 10-year cycle. Thank you. So when you get on email, we'll try to... Uh, <laughs> this would be a great one to send resubmit. all of those attachments. Again. Give you plenty of reading because it was plenty of... Yeah. This don't hesitate to give me a call if you don't receive it in a couple okay. of days. <laughs> so this was the special project report. Mm -hmm. Six page. I guess the third one I've had a seven. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well. This year, hopefully. Um, and then in 2015 is the decennial uh, evaluation process where the whole group comes in for three days and interviews students and staff and reviews tons of documents that we spent 18 months putting together. So this will be a so major undertaking. The new cycle again. Yeah. I know. Mike, Mike and I were here for the beginning of the first one. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else was, but well, I, was we, through, I know you were. You were in the principal seat. We will have a very heavy reliance on technology. Yeah. And Great. You know, there's there's quite a commitment you from our, our staff. Home. I beg your pardon? Email it to them, tell them to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> it's a database. We're looking at different databases right. for NIASC reporting yeah. and our own reporting. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I predict we'll be in better shape. Yeah, they will, get, they will get a login, it's true. <laughs> they don't um, have to come. 2015, you said? Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll be ready. Yeah. But it does mean that the sacred faculty meeting and in-service time we've devoted uh, to professional development has to uh, be pushed aside to a certain extent, perhaps for as much as six months, to produce the information that mm -hmm. NEAS no, requires. Yeah. But everything we do must be valuable. I'm not going to have them do, the teachers do, make work. If NEASC doesn't improve our education, encourage reflection and refinement of our curriculum, and really looking at student achievement and reporting on it and, and being able to review and upload student work that's meaningful that other teachers can look at, then it's just a, an academic exercise. And so I'm very hopeful that, the, that the, uh, a, um, a true evaluation process will provide the teachers the opportunity to see how far they've come and, and honestly how far we still have left to go. Mm. I don't want it to become a cynical process the way it is oftentimes perceived. Yeah, that's great to hear, Doreen. I think this could be really good. It's, I've seen we'll it the other way. I've seen it the we'll see. <laughs> and the last um, piece of information I sent you was the semester one behavior referral <laughs> data. Oh, right. And you, you got a bunch of numbers, but I asked our campus supervisor, Jeremiah Barrow, to um, give us an analysis of what he's seen so far this year. And I could just share with you a couple of highlights. Great. Uh, first, he starts uh, with more of a narrative. Uh, it's the end of his fourth semester at Leland and Gray. And he has seen a significant change in the school climate. My feelings are that the halls are a safer place to be for all. Um, I have seen a tightening down um, of what is tolerated by faculty, staff, and administration in a pretty significant way over the past four semesters. Um, this is not to imply that no misbehavior has changed in our, hall, in our that there is no misbehavior in our halls or our classrooms, um, but the nature of misbehavior is not consistently as extreme as it once was. My feelings are that there is a sense of peace and belonging for everyone at Leland Gray that was not present here three years ago. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Sorry. <laughs> I read that I was like, he wants something. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. But he didn't come, but, you know, he wrote this like three it. weeks ago. No, he didn't ask for anything. Good. <laughs> steps. Uh, <laughs> So he says in, um, okay, let's, okay. Uh, this year, the three times targeted class referral comprised 19% of all behavior infractions. Last year, the same infraction told 11% of all reported infractions. I suspect that the inflation <coughs> is due to a new bell system where we actually ring the bells at the end of each period, right. which is holding students to a higher level of accountability. And I see this as a positive trend. Uh, let's see. Uh, the number of suspensions is up, of a total of 42 um, a year ago uh, to 55 this fall. But the um, percentage of in-school suspensions is up by nine points, and out of school is down by nine points. Um, it is also worth noting that the end of Last school, the last school year, we had 35 referrals and 13 suspensions for substance violations, including tobacco. This year, including data from what we've completed of semester two, so that was a semester plus one month, we've only had two referrals for substance violations and one suspension. Last year, huge efforts were made to confront the drug culture at Leland and Gray. Although this is an issue we will continue to address, it does appear that we have gained good ground. Any questions? Can I ask a very quick question? Absolutely. In this district, I'm just coming from cyber bullying, and cyber mm. was, a, was a huge issue, and we were very reluctant to get involved in it sometimes if it was home-based, but it spilled over in the courtroom. Is that at all? At uh, the courtroom, listen to me. The classroom. <laughs> was, is that at all an issue here? Or? Sure. Okay. But uh, we don't hesitate to engage in the issue. Great. Uh, okay. The law really is uh, Vermont. Vermont has a bullying law, which includes, and uh, this policy, bullying policy that we'll right. adopt tonight, makes clear our responsibility oh, regarding well, cyber up later in bullying the as well. Yeah. Great. Um, so, and, and actually, the law in Vermont stems back uh, about a hundred years to when a teacher's mailbox was uh, uh, damaged by some <coughs> mad students, some angry students, and. Uh, the court, Supreme Court of Vermont said, well, the school can take disciplinary action with regard to off-campus behavior that is deleterious to the morale or the uh, learning of the students on campus, which is the basis for mm -hmm. us taking a, perhaps a, a stronger and higher degree of responsibility <coughs> regarding off-campus behavior, including cyberbullying. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Okay. Other questions? Order. Next week is Spirit Week. Oh, <laughs> that's a long time tradition here. Well, that'll wait till the next report. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you too. Thank, Thank you. you for the multiple reports that came out all last month. I think we were all fired up and ready last month, and then didn't get a quorum. <laughs> so, okay. There's no other questions for Duren. <coughs> move on to you, Stephen. I know your report right. came out. I'll try to be There's brief. Uh, any questions? Uh, I have printed copies here. Uh, have a hard copy, anybody? Okay. One to our guest there. Also, I have the legislative review came out, uh, and I know you're mostly on the list for that, but uh, I think I should. Share that with those of you that I know don't aren't as well connected yet. When you, yeah, as a member of this board, uh, no, you, you know, you'll be in a, you'll be a, you want a print copy there? Yeah. You didn't have to print it. Um, got a couple more, three more. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, maybe give it to. Oh, sorry. You know, yeah. um, anyway, you're a member of the Vermont School Boards Association, and they put down in com uh, put this report together with the uh, Superintendents Association. We have a. Uh, shared, uh, what do you call it, effort to put this out during the legislative sessions. Anybody else know? Thank you. See you next time. Anyway, I'm going to go up to the uh, House, the State House tomorrow all day, and I did 
field uh, from the Dover board uh, their issues that they wanted me to uh, call attention to legislators that I may be uh, meeting there. Uh, if any of you have something, I certainly am uh, willing to make, uh, make it known. I'm there too tomorrow. You're good. Yeah, I'm good. It's going to be a bit. I've been so I'm audition. Mm -hmm. Not me. Audition. I'm eating. <laughs> I'll probably be eating too, but uh, no, that's later in the afternoon. Frank, in the morning, in the morning it's early, Ed. Because we'll I saw basketball was part of it too. Their edition. Yeah. Um, okay, well, uh, you certainly want to contact your legislator, your representatives directly uh, in, real, in relation to any of these issues in the report. Linda, we'll, we'll get on the. Um, when you yeah. get her signed up, you'll also be sending her um, email address to VSBA, Vermont School Boards Association, and you'll start getting those emails from, from right. them as well. So. Thank you. Okay. And our uh, legislators are quite accessible here in this state. Uh, they have it's, it's yeah, quite a pretty, pretty quite well. an open place. Okay, anything else? I think that was it. I will be asking for an executive session and personnel later on. Okay. Tonight. Uh, okay. I think Go other ahead. than that, getting to the uh, polling policy is the only thing that I had as a priority. Yes, yeah. a question. Really? I'm not concerned about this board, but there's a Jamaica board with three new members at least, Tough and uh, we'll get two new members and. Yeah. Are they getting the, did they get this packet of uh, VSBA and VSA material, or will they get it? Well, the newer members uh, are not identified by email yet to me, so they won't get it until I get that done. Now, they're meeting for the first time to organize next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. See, it's unfortunate and because it's, that, yeah, that I think training, that I mean, if we can. Training was on the 18th. Well, there was another one in Brattleboro, though. Uh, I brought up with Bennington, I think, later on. Somebody called that to my attention at a meeting I was just at. This was the packet that you gave us, the manila envelope full of... Um, oh, yeah, yes. that came from VSBA. That, that didn't VSBA. come from him. He was just distributing yeah. it. Yeah. Is, uh, is that something that they can get? They were... It was yeah. very, I'll, I'll very VSBA, informative I'll stuff. ask VSBA tomorrow um, whether they're going to distribute more copies of that. I think that came out specifically for that timing with the press release and all yeah. that. Um, but Bruce, you do mention that it is very helpful. So if you would be so kind as to stop by the school, you could drop it off there with direction a request for uh, Susan Clark to copy it and put it in an envelope oh, for those I, new members. I mean, that saves me. I'll I mean, check. Yeah, thinking. I'll check and see. I they, think I've got them all, but they, I'm not sure. They probably have kids in the school. I don't know. They're two women that I've never met. Yes, I, I think they do. It was that I was just reading from one part of that. Yeah, yeah. There's several several different All things stapled together. And they may be hauling them around to the training um, sessions that are happening. And like the one is on Monday at Chester. Is anyone going Chester. to that? If you're, I don't know if you're interested. I didn't know any of that. Let me. I'll send you any. If you give me your email address, it doesn't matter whether it's the school board one here. But if you've got an email address at home, I could send you that link. And I think you have to sign up by Thursday. Oh, good. I'll copy this down, and then I'll send it to you later, and then you can right. decide if you're going to go. You know, there's it's a training for new board members. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. It's a. a it's like called a the essential work of school board members, and it's for new or not so new. Um, it's great. I went last year. I thought it was really helpful, and I'm not new. I don't know why. Was useful. Okay. And. Uh, We'll communicate first with this email, then we'll send you how to get your own Leland and Gray board email because uh, there are reasons for you to keep your board business separate from your yeah. private and personal yeah. business in terms of subpoenas and investigations yeah. that are, you know, haven't that. happened, but <laughs> I think you know, being legally careful, I'm sure you're aware is an important issue. Okay. Anything Other else? questions? Yeah. Thank you, Bruce. You can Okay. There's nothing else? Okay, Frank, you're up. I have a very brief report. Uh, just um, <clears throat> give you a quick status. This is the time of year where our uh, fiscal uh, condition is, is in good shape in that uh, many of our towns have uh, paid most or all of their assessments, like Jamaica pays all at once. So our cash flow is very favorable and our fund balance is, is good. Um, 
we are looking forward uh, to next week uh, what I hope to be a sort of the pivotal um, uh, turning point in consolidating two accounting systems into one. So it's been a very challenging um, time uh, to go through the audit for fiscal year 12 and then jump right into the budgeting and then the development and the analysis and the publishing of the budgets and, and then transitioning to you know, meeting all the IRS requirements on a very strict timeline uh, and then throwing in that retro pay for the teacher contract was uh, uh, difficult to, to, to um, schedule when all of these other things are, are coming due. But um, we're finally uh, making this, uh, this consolidation of two systems the top priority in the business office so that we will be ready for uh, fiscal year end and uh, the, the new cycle of audits and we are scheduled for all districts to be audited this uh, fiscal year 13. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, I, uh, just a reminder, um, I mentioned that the transition to a new accounting system was, was really driven by uh, the state recognizing that, uh, you know, the vast majority of funding now runs through the Department of Education and the State Education Fund. And, um, uh, you know, for example, they had legislation passed last year that said there will be uh, fiscal audits for schools every year. It's, it's been a three-year option. Um, and, and the reasoning is, is that they, they, they want to track their money. They want accountability for the $1.4 billion that runs through the state um, K-12 public education. Um, and so they're also driving uh, a much more detailed chart of accounts. Um, so our chart of accounts has doubled in terms of the, the digits that capture what we do. So. Uh, that's a little bit of the background of why we're we're doing this. The districts that that haven't uh, done this are, are are going to have to, um, and I I do expect that we'll be we'll be a little ahead of the curve when, when we're done. But right at the moment, it's it's a very big challenge. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's my report. Glad to answer any questions. You bowled them over. Good. I don't know what to say. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. You're welcome. Okay. If there's no other administrative report, all business. Go for it. <laughs> you don't think you want me to do it. So. <laughs> well, I missed half the last meeting. That's true. So you I'm did. I'm really so unfamiliar. Well, this all is, the red, is, this is a report on the regional. We sent articles to the state. Right. right after that, we took them. I don't know if you want to report, Bruce. Go ahead. Feel free. How to. angry do you want me to get? I don't want I, you to get angry I, at all. I, I sort of feel. Angry all report. <laughs> so personally, I feel like I'm between a rock and a hard place because I'm in favor of proceeding, but I'm not convinced that the town of Jamaica is, and I know that the other member of the committee from Jamaica. Um, had a whole lot of questions and he wasn't at the we had a meeting and then the previous meeting he wasn't there and then he came to our last one and got very upset that questions didn't get answered before we sent the articles ahead uh, to the State Board of Education and I guess I was in favor of moving on but I didn't think that we could if he wasn't ready, because he's a um, a person in town that everybody listens to, and uh, a good portion of people, so I felt we had to um, try to accommodate his and answer his questions, and that was one person, and there was a second person from uh, but different questions had had real concerns about another issue, but so there were two issues. And uh, we did rescind it. So, uh, what are the issues? What, what, like, can we can we talk about the issues here? Or? Mm -hmm. We have four questions that we still need to now we need to answer. Well, uh, go, going back to the second person, I'll just say that we've had an ongoing conversation about. Um, there's one committee member who's a board member from Newfane who feels very strongly that he wants um, certain financial information in the articles 
that we have not been able to ask our administration to give. As a committee, we haven't asked them because we haven't um, done a, a we haven't had a conversation yet about what our perspective is of what the new s structure and school system will be under the red. There's also the question of what authority we have um, as, a, as a regional education committee, a study committee, as opposed to a regional education board. So that's one of the questions that we're going to be talking about at our next regional education um, study committee meeting. Uh, but so that one, um, we're going to have a meeting next week, and we're going to be talking again about a framework. It's what are we going to do with the schools if they at some point close in the future, and what those costs will be. We can, you know, possibly give some estimates, but we, as a study committee, have never asked the administration to give us specifics around that because we didn't give them specifics about what we, what our expectations were. So they couldn't give it to us, and he's having an issue about, with that. So we're going to have a conversation at the study committee level about vision, about what our vision is for this. And we have a list of, I don't know, 25, 25 questions, questions 25. that we'll answer. And maybe at the end of that, we'll be able to go back and ask the administration to give an estimate of some of the answers to the questions he has. Um, I'll give you an example just specifically. What's, what's the student-teacher ratio? Yeah. Oh, that what, was a big what, discussion. What, you know, what, too. <laughs> well, what, that's just going to be what yeah. the cap is at the state. Well, well that's, right? that's, 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 well, that's what I've heard. Well, I, I mean, that's a default, but it, it, you know, uh, we, we certainly don't want to have unrealistic expectations about how much money is saved or how, what class size will be unless this committee actually so, uh, never so directs. Because, and, and then we want uh, second language, foreign language instruction in the elementary school. I certainly am advocate for that. but. You know that's that's something to be 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 uh, so directed by the committee yeah. at that because those affect you know those parameters affect our uh, cost estimates. Uh, so so one of the other questions that that was, I think, eventually will be simple to solve, is the representation to WCSU mm -hmm. on the Wyndham Central Board. And I think there are a yes. number of formulas. There are. And I'll be sending there. them out to every yeah. board member very, very soon. Thank I'm just you. waiting to hear back from one more person on it. And then I'll be sending those out, options, different options we'll have on that. We'll be voting on that, hopefully, on um, March 27th at the Wyndham Central Board meeting. So hopefully that one will get answered. Um, just to be clear on that, that all of these proposals are, are based on the same proportional relative representational authority on that, on that board. It's the one we spoke about earlier. We'll need to... Um, apply to the State Board of Education for a waiver if we actually, if a, a red is formed in the future, we would need to apply to the State Board of Education for a waiver to be able to change our structure of voting membership at the Wyndham Central Board. So, um, the authority, what's the authority between the red committee and the, uh, of the red committee, study committee has written the articles of agreement, um, how bound is the Future, future board, future board so to those articles. It's still an unknown. We will have to ask the State Board of Education that, but it is one of those questions. Um, what authority does the individual school boards have over the Red Committee? That's one of the questions we'll be talking about at the next meeting. And there's one other, there's a fourth. Voting? You did voting. You did vote. There's one other. There were four things. Boards, money. So, anyway, at the end of the meeting, what, what, what happened was there were some people came in, there was a, uh, clearly a breakdown of communication between um, individual school boards and the Red Committee, and I won't go into any reasons why, but there were probably multiple reasons why there was a breakdown um, in communication. So, there were some unhappy people who didn't want to see the article sent at that point in time. However, by the end of the meeting, you know, everybody in the room agreed that if we can get these questions answered, there wasn't a person, I don't think, there who said we don't want to send them. We, that may be the answer, and we may be sending them right after that, or, or right after the um, discussion and visioning and answering of those questions. So we'll see. Um, but one thing's for sure, the committee felt very, very strongly about making sure everybody was on board and satisfied. No one, sh we shouldn't be sending any articles of agreement to the State Board of Education if this question's on the table. They need to be answered. Right. 
So um, we what said sort immediately. Of are we talking about? The, to form a red, you have to send um, a form of articles of agreement that are part of the statute. Act 153, and you have to answer all kinds of. Well, I tell you what, the board membership would be, and, yeah, and it's uh, a it's a form that you have to f basically fill out. Um, and if you go online and you go to the Red Committee's um, website, go look at Articles of Agreement. You'll notice 15 pages, a couple of different um, appendices to that. Yeah, I didn't bring a hard copy. Or um, I, I probably have one. one. But anyway, here they're, it is, the latest. They're, the, they're basically the rules of how things would happen with a new, a new uh, board to report. The effect on the tax rate, projected effects on the tax rate costs. It's, and so forth. it's multiple things. It's data. A lot of it's data. Go ahead. Um, I do have to say, I, this may sound boring, but I watched <laughs> Channel 10 and <laughs> watched some of the town meetings. And I saw a conflicting statement about the red and about in Townsend they asked um, April about the voting for it and how it would work if Townsend didn't vote for it but the other schools the other towns did she said I believe and I'd have to watch it over again that if we vote against it we don't have to do it but in Jamaica you said that if three other towns vote for it, we're Jamaica, whether we I vote know I didn't down. say that. No, but that's how it that, sounded that be in what, because I Drew, was listening Drew to both Drew did say them. something about that. I See, think. we have five towns, um, which are the five Leona Gray member towns, as part of this. And four of them are necessary. One of them is advisory. Wyndham is advisory. Um, so Wyndham can vote for it or can vote against it, and it could still form. But if any of the nece necessary districts vote against it, it is not formed. Okay. The, the red does not happen. That, because so we you call need four we, towns to go? In with. our situation, we do, because that's what we decided. We wanted all four. Our committee decided we wanted all four. Yes. Both of these points of view are correct. But at Memley says it's correct because our articles so stipulate, and the law does not yet require that. The they law don't. would have permitted we three to vote and form Which is why we are... Two. But the law is going to be changed, or at least there is legislation, to make that technical adjustment we have so a technical it's more possible. To get it and one of the objections from uh, Drew was that uh, he wanted to make sure the legislature had this passed before he was going to go any further. That, that was, was the, the other one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I knew I, it was one more. It just concerned me because I saw two statements that well, seemed to be different and it's going to be so important it just impressed upon me how important it is going to be to try and get people to read these things absolutely and and your and take point responsibility for knowing your point that you've brought up to me has been brought up to me by others and um, in in fact in Townsend there's some some questions about Townsend's town meeting um, so I, I will say that I have talked, I've, I've sent an email to you and John Everett, who's the, I'm chair of the committee, so I sent an email to our consultant and to Stephen, and one of those was that those questions on there. And so when I spoke to John Everett today, the consultant, he suggested that we start getting all those questions that are asked shared with him, and he's going to start compiling them and forming what we call a fax document so that we can start making sure that we're all on the same page. I mm. had serious concerns about exactly that same thing mm. following town meeting. I think there were some conflicting reports. The committee itself, I don't think, has any conflicting. But you know, right. when you're under fire and you're sitting up in front of a yeah. whole bunch of people who are you know, demanding or unhappy, we've yeah. been there before here at Leland yeah. & Gray. And it's really hard to make sure that everybody's saying the exact same thing. We need to make sure we are. We and, absolutely need to. Yeah. So and they're firing questions at you. Yeah. And it's we're it can be not very quite there yet, it doesn't seem. Yeah. Like, and I would hate for people to think that anybody's trying to pull something. Yeah. Because which nobody they're not. is. You <laughs> yeah. know, and it would just be a shame for a misunderstanding to create that aura because it can be created very easily. Yeah. So even people who aren't on the Red Committee, it's really important for all of you to be aware of this too, yeah. because we're board members. And even though Leland Gray itself doesn't have a role on this, we certainly have a huge role in this. 
So we all need to be familiar with it as well. So if you can't come to Red Committee meetings, we need to be having this conversation at the board level. You need to be asking questions. Um, if you have questions, you should put, jot them down, send them to me by email. We need to make sure we're all on the same page on this because it's critical. Go ahead. Well, at our town meeting, <coughs> on time, she presented and referenced the bread. She said that, um, you know, it's going to take four to five years to build a new facility. Meanwhile, been saying that for a long time, it's not. Trouble. Meanwhile, we have to run our school. So, but the bottom line is, it's not a cost savings. Was her message? Mm -hmm. So, maybe you need to clear that up, right? I mean, like yeah. how we, how are you going to get people right. understanding? I know. I'm not that. sure where that perspective got uh, out there about four or five know. years. It never came up, but but it's been repeated quite often. Yeah, and I that mean, again was repeated at our board. So <laughs> yeah, our town uh, meetings. Honestly, I mean, you know, we all know how long it takes to get bond votes through and that sort of thing. Mm. So those kinds of things can take a while, but we don't have a clue how long it would take. It might. We might. If the but don't you think that's an answer more? that you would might want to know? The, you yeah. might want to know that. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Is, it is answered in the articles in the appendix if you go to the actual document. And read so, what it, is the answer? Different. How long will the facility take to build? Oh, uh, no, they're not, they're not that's projecting answer. that. They're just saying two to three years is possible. But on the short side, Frank would say three at the most, and at the least, and probably five to the so most. You, so, you can build a school in, in a year, you know, I mean, pretty easily. But then, there, but, you know, there's also the a process bond, leading up to all it. that process. Right. Right. I don't know if you, have, you want to share Frank on this. Well, no, that's right. So. You know, it all depends. I mean, if, if you have a land purchase you have to do, you, we all know how long it takes to close on land. That, that sort of thing is what delays those things. But when it comes to building, and the, you know, that, that's honestly less than a lot of people think it is. Once you got everything in place, it's the build up to it, I think. So, any other comments or questions? Well, I just, the window board has made it clear that they're not. <coughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, there's but there's there's Wyndham residents that are like, well, why are we not? Yeah. Well, so and, right. and, and then I, that's the well, well that we, was part of the rationale why we're not. Actually, Dion, I should follow up with that because it's important that we do have this conversation so that you can share because because for some reason uh, uh, your board your committee I mean your town is still on our committee the yeah. committee but they're not attending yeah. the meeting so they're not in the loop. Yeah. They're not up to date on some of the things, but we have had the conversation. If we actually do end up sending our articles and we do get involved in a public engagement campaign at our last meeting, we talked about what do we do about Wyndham, because Wyndham will still vote. They have to vote. That we we didn't think they had to, but they clearly do. The statute says that they have to vote. So um, we will will obviously make the offer to come up there and do some presentation to the community mm -hmm. so that there yeah. are accurate things, information yeah. out there. That would be probably helpful. Yeah, I mean, and, and I would encourage um, Wyndham, especially Wyndham Board, who's got an appointed person on that, to continue to come to these meetings. I think it's pretty important. I know how busy they are, but if maybe Wyndham Board, school board could appoint someone different or, or something, just so that there's that liaison, because if we do move forward, the vote will happen in Wyndham. And I hate to have Wyndham not involved. Um, along the same line of how ne necessary it is to do a good job of communicating. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is. Um, I was asked whether there's going to be a scenario where a, a student who lives in Newfane will be going to Jamaica because enrollment is too high here. Class, <laughs> class sizes are different sizes. You know, the Jot that one down, would you? And I was like, I don't think so. And they were like, yes, the red is going to do that. It was, like, it was said to me with great authority. And I was like, well, if you say so, but I don't think that's, gonna, that's the way it's going to work. Article 17, students in grades pre-K through 6 will be served by the same school configuration that currently exists. It's, it's under school assignments. We've had the conversation. I, I, I would suggest that for anyone getting questions, um, that they don't feel comfortable answering or you hear something that doesn't make sense to you, really refer them back to the articles which are online all the time and kept hopefully up to date because they haven't been up to date, but they need to be. And um, it's most of the questions I think can be answered by the articles of agreement. And if they can't, we need to know about it so that we are pr producing another document um, that, that does allow that, uh, you know, out the answers to be out there. That's critical. We have had that conversation. Will the red board be able to, um, if, if the red is formed and the red board is formed, will they be able to make exceptions? For example, if someone 
um, from Newfane Works in the Jamaica School or something that they want to take their child there? Will the Red Board allow exceptions to that rule? It's possible, but there has never been any kind of dis, you know, decision about that where kids will move around or whatever. Because Article 16 says there's no plan to have open school choice. Right. right. So I think the point is that we should really make sure that these are clear to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, we're not at that point yet, okay, where we're, we're, we're in the yeah. public engagement campaign. We've talked about this a lot, and until we are, we are ready to have the conversation, we didn't want to start the conversation and not have answers for questions that were coming out. So we've been working on getting the answers first before we go out there, and so I think that's, we've been trying to be very responsible, but in the meantime, it's taken us a long time to get here, and I think because of the length of time that it's taken us to have this conversation and to make sure we are, prepared to answer them, people have sort of formed opinions and, and words, things get out there. So it's just going to be really important. By taking our time, we've allowed that to happen, but if we hadn't taken our time, we would have been railroading people. We don't want to be doing that because that's a lot of the perception around the state when other things have happened. People feel like they're being pushed. So we've kind of stepped back and methodically gone through this process. But um, it is time to make sure that this is all out there. And so we're on. That's our next meeting. Next, the April 3rd meeting is our next April meeting 3rd, yeah. at 530 here. And um, we'll be having those conversations. And seriously, Bruce, I meant it when I said write it down. Because I, you know, any questions that come, they, they need to come <laughs> to our committee. And I think For some sure. of these things were things that were originally talked about yeah. way back at the very beginning. Is the this idea, going to be you an know, option? schools that specialize in certain things. You sure. Can, there's all kinds of thoughts, but those were just thoughts. One of the things that I think are going to be really important to get across, and that is that there are possibilities out there that probably are unlimited, all right? Yeah. But, but a lot of it is going to depend on the um, wants and needs of the communities, the board, the students, the numbers. Um, you know, there's it, what this is, is it's opening up opportunities to do many things in the future. But we don't think, as a study committee, that we should be drawing the lines in the sand around what exactly should be happening in the future. We are saying, here's a structure, a governance structure, that is opening things up and allowing a lot of those conversations and you know, thinking outside the box and what can we do? Can we have a school that really does focus on <coughs> arts or science or whatever. Are we going to be talking about that? In the meantime, not to complicate it anymore, but we yeah. are still having a conversation with Wyndham Southwest as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this ongoing conversation with Wyndham Southwest may even open up some other schools. It's, uh, I office. think everybody at our town meeting agreed, or most people agreed, something's got to be done. Right, and that's the one thing we keep hearing. Things aren't yeah. working the way they're going. So I just, you know, I, I would suggest everybody, you know, uh, instead of getting worried about what things are, ask what things are. And that's what I keep trying to tell people. If you have questions, there's no, there's an unlimited number of questions out there. And I'll bet you I don't have the answers to all of them myself. But if there's questions that aren't answered, they need to be answered. So, all right, any other questions or comments? Yep. There is, is it Article 1 where it talks about Wyndham? And, and how? They've got the articles in front of them. Yeah, that's why I'm asking you. Article 1 talks yes. about necessary towns and advisory. Is it the second paragraph, is it the? We had made some adjustments. The Wyndham that's School District is an advisable one. district. This. That will be included as a. This is the one that we had changed some of the language in, and I, I'm, I've it's got scribbles on the, by the Wyndham oh, voters. Oh. If the voters do not approve, the Wyndham School District will remain intact. Right. So there is a paragraph in there um, that talks about the twists and turns of options. Yeah. See, and I, I'm not sure and whether. Actually, I, don't I mean, I know Stephen went to the Wyndham School Board and explained to them the one change in that, and that was that we, as a committee, have um, have changed the articles. You, you went. They no to longer. Them. Yeah. They no yeah. longer. So have they won't have a voting representative on the red board. At the red board. And right. the idea where it was, which, or at least the accommodation was for Wyndham's desire to be both independent at the elementary school and part of Leland and Gray, is for them to have a voting representative who would only vote on matters related to the high school. That bothered some of the other towns at their public meetings. 
They well, couldn't see how we could distinguish between what things affected, you know, grade seven through twelve, and what things affected K only K through there's six. There's too much overlap, <laughs> and we couldn't answer the questions that were popping up from other towns and reassuring them. So we finally realized that as much as we tried to accommodate Wyndham, because I know Wyndham still wanted to be involved with a vote at the Leland Gray level because they wanted to stay involved with Leland Gray Union High School, Leland Gray Union High School will no longer exist. They will be a K-12 education system. The Union High School won't. So, you know. Does that, well, so the, the, the net effect choice. is that what? They do would be choice. The net effect they is they become up, a choice. They would, a 7, 12 choice and that's what the, that's what the so board they could send to wherever. And, and I mean, that wasn't their first um, that wasn't their request. First choice. They certainly no. didn't want it that way, but um, I think that, you know, they were Well, when I, when I spoke right? to them, they said, well, you know, in some ways that solves our, our problem where we have people who want to be uh, Green Mountain, going High to School Green Mountain or something. And, uh, of course, it isn't going to uh, how shall I say that the prediction would be that you don't no longer control your costs at that end of your budget. There are so issues around that's, it. That's a problem, potential problem, certainly that uh, a number of other choice towns, Dover most recently, once again had a very large contingent of parents show up and vote at the annual meeting to raise the tuition for Burr and Burton and raise the tuition for others as well. So, you know, their budget is, you know, higher than they had thought it might be. But that's the power of the, of the, of the school district and the voters on that, on that day uh, to secure, uh, you know, the uh, tuition for their uh, independent schools. The language is still in there, though, that we, we've been trying to make sure that we were doing whatever we could to accommodate Wyndham. We wanted Wyndham involved in this, and, and uh, there's no hard feelings that Wyndham decided not to, but one of the things we'd agreed to was the language around not closing the school unless the town yeah. voted. Right. And so, you know, that still remains there. And, yeah. and we feel that way about all towns. Yeah. Thanks for all the towns, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, <laughs> who knows what, what will happen with all this. But I, I just want to make sure the lines of communication are open with Wyndham. So I hope you'll share that. I know Stephen has shared that. And I think it's really important that Wyndham is very aware of what's happening. And, and if they, they can participate at whatever level they want. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Well, the other, you know, just the other key issue is that Wyndham, at, at least as we understand the law, if the articles go to the State Board of Education, they are approved, and Wyndham will be uh, asked to vote by Australian ballot, okay. just like the rest of the towns. I know that. Uh, and that, that was something that... Was I that shared at your first, time? Yeah, you know? uh, that was, that was certainly shared. shared with no, me. she didn't mention that. That well, that was shared by me with the board, and they understood that to be the case. But so I, the town will actually make the town actually right. makes the decision. No, that wasn't shared. <laughs> yeah, well, I I know that the board. But see, we yeah, yeah, it's not. No, that wasn't shared. But yeah. Thank you. But uh, I I can't. I mean, it's a little premature to say that that is going to happen or not going to happen because the first step is for these articles to get approved by the Red Study Committee to go on to the State Board of no. Education. Mm -hmm. So that would be a special meeting or that would occur at town meeting? It would occur, no, it, well, it would be a special meeting. That, that all the Australian, all the voting, Australian ballot. Australian ballot, all the voting has to take place on the same day for all the towns yep. involved. Yeah. But obviously because you have to have informational meetings before that oh, yeah. to prepare the public to make a decision. But that's, that's really one of the next steps after this envisioning and these answering the 25 questions is for the red committee to figure out what their information is. Well, I certainly hope they are aware because they have been, had that shared with them. Um, I, I, that's one of the reasons why it would be very helpful if there was someone in Wyndham who was attending our meeting so that they were making yeah. sure Stevens had to kind of be taken on the responsibility of, of just sharing with the board. Um, and, and that's not really his no. job. And so okay. if, if they can be encouraged to come, that would be great. So now is Wyndham one of the original supervisor union schools that yep. would take yes. the whole supervisor union to agree that they aren't part of the they uh, well well you, there's two different things there's supervisor union that is Luna Gray Union High School and yes they are a member of both and it does require both um, union school districts all towns to agree to have them out or in right yeah. so, so how would they have school choice suddenly if if 
th this would supersede that's that. That's right. That's what the law is. That's what the law is changing Act about the union school that. district. Uh, you know, for and someone allowed. to withdraw from a union school district, the rest of the other members would have to vote. have to agree right. and right. vote. Right. They'd all have to vote and agree to let them go. But in this case, right. because the the goal, at least from the state's point of view in the legislation, is to have a more cohesive K through 12 system, that that takes precedence. That's why. Uh, they, they changed the law so that one town who's a member of a union school district could not veto the, the, the desire of the other ten member towns of a union school district to form a, a K through 12 district or even a K through 6 district like uh, Floodbrook has a union mm -hmm. elementary school district. Floodbrook's the only, I think, one of the only other groups that's formed an official it is uh, the only red, other one who the has one the that, state. And, it's the only and red they've, that's they've been working that way since 1969 or something, so it isn't too surprising that they thought it was a good idea. I don't know how much tax benefit they got out of it. Maybe they get that too. Well, they did get the, yeah. the, the red benefit. Yeah. Tax and taxes. So stay tuned. It's out there. Um, it, but but it, you know, there, Stephen had sent an email. You sent that. I have sent that. You. I have asked you to send another one to clarify because I have had one phone call, one email, one follow up after another. Everybody thinking that there's no longer a red committee because of the email that you sent to oh, Armando. Okay. So read my email and you'll see. Right, well. um, uh, he he is going to send out because I'm going to make sure he does or I will yeah. um, a clarification around it that that the red committee is still active moving forward answering questions and hoping to you know take the, ne the next step whatever that may be so just had a we just had a pullback for a short time which is i think important that we follow through on it okay if there's no other questions about the red um ratifying work from the um 6 30 meeting we had on before our last meeting we didn't have a quorum of our board for the night, we didn't have a quorum for the pre-meeting either. We actually did the same thing last year because we didn't have a quorum of the board when we um, <coughs> did the superintendent evaluation. But there were five of us in the room, as there were last year, and we hope that the rest of you will vote to ratify the work that we did so that we can complete the process of evaluation and push, put ours into the um, supervisory union one, join the supervisory union one. So. Somebody wants to make a motion. Who was it? So moved. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second to ratify um, the work? I don't know how we worded that last year. To ratify the work done by the superintendent evaluation subcommittee. Okay, and Bauman seconded it. Okay, any questions or comments on that? If not, all those in favor of the motion to ratify this. Superintendent evaluation subcommittee's work. Please say aye. Aye. And opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Um, and I'll just to explain the each board for whom I work uh, evaluates the superintendent and then they meet to uh, combine those uh, evaluations to give me some uh, feedback and also decide whether or not to renew my contract. It's also a survey of administrative people, principal, yep. administrators, right? So um, I'm looking at new business now, and we've done this, I guess, most of this, right? New business, yes. Okay, yep. so we've already talked about the kneecap, we've already talked about me ask um, board members' ideas. I, I'm going to ask you to put this one off for the next meeting, honestly, because I think it would be great to have Bell a little more uh, time on the board, get a sense of things, and if you guys, I, I don't want to be here for a long time to think about this, We're but again, on. once again, if you can think about it for one of the future meetings, we'll, go ahead. Could you tell us what that means? What do what we, what? Well, like we had talked about in the past, any ideas that you have, things that you, like if you want to have a retreat, do we want to be focusing again on updating our goals? Okay. What, are, what are our thoughts for okay. the work of our board? What do we want to be focused on for the next year or so? Or, or longer, actually. I think it's probably smart to look at it yeah. a little farther uh, out. There, there's a cyclical nature to your work there is. regarding budget preparation and so forth. That's another thing to consider and the experience with this. And, and then there are the issues that you think uh, are, are, uh, are ideas, you know, the big ideas. Direction. Just to make sure we're staying in our role where we want to be. And like a review of our last goal right thing 
how we did. That's right. Yep, and and updating as need be, and, and this is going to require working closely with administration on that. I think. Okay, so keep that in mind for. We'll, we'll put it on another agenda. The, the, that's okay. the end result would be a list of agenda items that we prioritize. Okay, so yeah, yank that one. We'll do bills and pay orders. If there's nothing else, do bills and pay orders. Um, do this real quick. All right. So we have warrants um, dated between 1 8 and 3 4. We've got five of them. They're totaling $184,931.38. And we have payroll 111, 215, 215, and 3 1. They're number 30, 35, 34, and 36, totaling $248,722.49. Total warrants and payrolls are $433,653.87. I need a motion first. Make a motion. Which Patty just made. Mm -hmm. Wait one second. That. <laughs> Someone second? second? I'll second. Okay. It's been seconded all over. <laughs> all right. Any comments, questions, changes? Nothing? Okay. If not, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. And opposed? Abstentions? Thank you guys for reviewing those. That's great. Okay. Oh, these minutes the, are separate. The minutes, we agenda, didn't yeah. do them. Right. We didn't do them in the consent agenda on purpose because there's so many and I wanted to make sure everybody understood why these weren't here. We hadn't approved them for several different reasons. So, um, the the 12, 11, 12 minutes, and the 1, 8 minutes are all regular board meeting minutes. The 1, 30, 13 minutes were our information meeting that we held. We had a short meeting before it, I think, and then um, the information meeting. You all have these. They've all been posted online. I just I checked. And um, you know, Tara, as usual, has provided them. Um, 2, 5 was our pre-annual meeting minutes. Remember that? I didn't come to that, but you guys did at the auditor meeting. Okay, so um, I move that we approve the minutes of 12, 11, 12, 1, 8, 13, 1, 30, 13, and 2, 5, 13, all at once. Okay, second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. I just wanted to make one mention, and it's very, very, un it's not a big deal at all, but um, on the, actually, where this was actually on the notes, but I'm going to put it under here under discussion just because it's 12. Well, um, the notes from last time, it made a mention in uh, under um, 5B that Paul was there. Paul was not there. It must have been, I think it was Bruce who made the comment. So I was just going to mention that to you under the notes. It's not one of the ones we're approving right now. So we Paul can't approve was those. not there when I had him there at the last a, meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He um, wasn't there, but he, you had him down as the one who made the, the comment. Uh -huh. And it was actually, I think, Bruce. Okay. Um, this is the, these are the only ones we can approve. We can't approve the 12, 12 ones because we weren't a quorum. No, so two, 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 I mean two, twelve. So, do you want me to make that correction and redistribute those? I, I would, I would just to make okay. sure that we don't. I, I, if if it wasn't a person's name, I wouldn't no, think it was fine. a big deal. But I think it's yeah. important. We don't want any confusion around who who actually was there or said it wasn't anything right. controversial. It was just okay. so. Any other comments or questions about these four sets of minutes that we actually can approve? Steven, go ahead. Say? Well, go ahead. Vote first. No. Oh, okay. Make a suggestion. If there's, you ready to vote? Okay. All those in favor of approving the minutes as stated, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Motion passes. Chair, I just ask you to record in these minutes to note that the meeting of two, twelve, thirteen. Uh, it couldn't be done, approved. Did not have a quorum. Right. Did not enjoy a quorum. And that is good for the auditors to know that the reason why they're missing minutes for that time is there was no action. There was no well, they quorum. are posted. The notes are all there. We just can't, we couldn't call it to order and we can't approve the minutes because yep. they aren't actually minutes. They're just notes. So, and, but Tara has put, put them online. Yeah, no, I, I sent them to Allison. Right, so. and Allison put She's, them online. So, yeah. so they're all available in there, but, but it is probably important to put that in our official minutes saying that. Okay. We couldn't approve it because we didn't have a quorum. The notes actually say that as well. Yeah, I think so. They do. Okay. Okay. Consent agenda. This is a 
non-discussion under consent agenda unless somebody wants to pull the bullying policy out of the consent agenda. If not, we just need a motion to approve the consent agenda. <coughs> To approve the consent agenda. Okay, it's been moved. All those, no, it doesn't. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 And opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? And you did give a copy to Linda, right? Yeah, okay. I did. Yes, it's a very she important So you can look at it, and you'll see online all of our policies are actually online. So you should go, feel free to review them. If you have questions, <laughs> don't hesitate to ask. I did send you an email already, so you'll all know right. to back to us. <laughs> Give us an email address. We're going to be all over you. <laughs> okay. Executive session. Can I just ask a yep. question? Yeah. Of course you can. Please. I think I heard you say there's another red meeting coming up. Shall I include that in the yes. list of next Let's do that. It, because it came up since then. It was, it's April 3rd. It's April 3rd, 3rd here at 5.30, right? Yeah. And that's assuming the one is going to happen at 7, right? It is, as far as I know. I mean, I haven't got a quorum confirmation, but I, you know, everybody seems to say it is. The, the, What's the one on the third? officers have agreed. The, the third is an executive committee meeting to do the superintendent evaluation at 7. Oh, that's right. Um, but it won't require the three and board members. Meeting, the oh, April 9th meeting. Yeah. Says board organizational meeting is that just a regular Lulu and Yeah, that was a mistake. I actually noticed that on the. It's not an organizational meeting. I okay. think I mentioned that too. We so that's that just a regular. Old it's just our. It's I'm actually. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just yeah. Board, oh. regular board meeting. No, no, no. Yeah. The twenty seven. She's looking at a different. Yeah. I'm just pulling it off the agenda. But there were two <laughs> next <laughs> meetings. One is an organizational yeah, meeting on the twenty seventh for the WCSU, and then there was April 9th, which said organizational yeah. meeting, but I think it's just it, our regular. It is our regular okay. meeting. I, I know. I saw. It's not on this one because I think you corrected. She's yeah. looking at another one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, okay. you're right. We our, our April 9th meeting is our regular board meeting. Oh. Yeah. And yes, the March twenty seventh one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is actually um, reorganization of when for W. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You you corrected it. I did. Yeah, I got a blank corrected. That's why right, so I thought I was jumping. No, you were right. I, you were right because I caught it too. Yep. <laughs> okay, so we need a motion to go into executive session for personnel. So moved. Second. Okay. I moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay, I have uh, I have a uh, letter of resignation to uh, to read uh, for the board. Uh, uh, dear Stephen, I have decided to retire as a teacher at Leland and Gray Union High School effective July 1, 2013. Enclosed uh, is uh, some documents uh, related to uh, my retirement. Uh, it is a pleasure to work with you. And for the Wyndham Central Supervisor Union, sincerely, John T. Began. He served for 25 years as of June 30th. And wow. uh, I have always considered him to be a very fine colleague and uh, a committed educator. And I think uh, he will be uh, he will be missed. And um, he was. Uh, board may not realize one of his great contributions to the school was that he was able both to teach English and math as a highly, wow. as a highly qualified we were, teacher. We were very fortunate to have that. Quite a usual combination. Yeah. We took and advantage of that. Back and forth he did. Two times. He took advantage of that a number of times. In fact, he would teach math and English the same year, and, you know, quite often at, uh, at both middle school and, and high school level. Right. Well, so I recommend the board accept this uh, letter of resignation. All right. I'll make a motion to accept uh, John Deegan's letter of resignation and uh, wish him well in his future endeavors and thank him for his years of service. Absolutely. Is there a second to that? I'll second that. Okay, it's been seconded. And, and I think regret. conversation, d discussion, I think we all echo that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Hope you'll share it right, with him for us. Yep. All those in you. favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, wish him well. And tell him retirement's great. Yeah, <laughs> I'm get Dewey Call. He can get on the board. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He's been here already. He's been here before. He was yeah. 
war with my father. Sorry? Is he a war? <laughs> he's Jamaican. Jamaica. He's Jamaica. from Jamaica. <laughs> Jamaica. He's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he's the a great, he's a great guy with a lot of energy. All right. Anything else? That's it. All right. We need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. Please, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we're done.